Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the twenty-first episode of season two of Coffee with Ashish. And today we've got a, a very special guest with us, uh, Sri Hari Nair, with us today. And Hari has got a immaculate profile. He is an entrepreneur, management consultant, a travel talk show host, just like Ashish as well, a radio show host, and he likes to call himself an eternal student. He is currently on a sabbatical since the sale of company he co-founded. Uh, and is now deeply researching uh, ancient indian civilization which sounds uh, pretty fascinating hari would love to hear more yeah. about that uh, hari has spent more than 15 years as an entrepreneur building holidayiq.com uh, which we all love and adore uh, he has also raised capital from some of the largest vc firms scale up the community to more than 8 million members across india and then sold the company in late 2019 mm-hmm. to a major european travel uh, management company lastminute.com group Uh, before that hari has also worked as a management consultant uh, for 15 years in kpmg so that's something we share uh, hari i used to work with oh. deloitte uh, hari has worked on major infra projects and he has also been involved in some of the signature infrastructure projects such as the new airport in delhi mumbai and bangalore the cross sri the famous worli bandra ceiling in mumbai and privatization of power distribution in delhi uh, in 2017 uh, hari also created hashtag conversations with hari which is a unique travel uh, talk show uh, with successful and interesting uh, you know guests and celebrities uh, each episode it was hosted on facebook and got more than 2 to 4 million views each which is really amazing uh, hari has also anchored a travel radio show on radio indigo along with rj evita lewis so a very interesting personality i can assure all of you and i think it's going to be a really invigorating and, and fresh conversation uh, with hari so a very warm welcome to you uh, hari on our show and i'm going to request awesome. ashish to have a conversation with you while i also sit back and enjoy my coffee <laughs> let me thank you hari hope you enjoying your coffee yes yes absolutely thank you very much kartik for that wonderful introduction uh, you know and and to both of you for having me here so thanks a lot I'm looking forward to the chat yeah So you know, Hari, let's start off with you know you obviously you've done many things in in your life, and but there would be a common thread which binds across those many things, um, if there is. And how did you end up with all these? Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a common thread that evolves, I think. But there is a common thread. I think when I look back now, I think there is a common thread, and the common thread is this. And uh, uh, Ashish, so uh, not that I started with this thought, but I think somewhere along the way I kind of got this thought that. Uh, uh, you know i for me career or work or what i do uh, professionally is subservient to the larger idea of how you live life right uh, so the more important thing is the, the life you live and the work you do has to be part of your imagination or your vision of what is the kind of life you want to live and that's how i looked at my the work i do right. uh, and 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 for me the singular thing about the life i lead is that at any point in time uh, i should be maximizing i should just be enjoying uh every dimension of 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 what i'm doing at that point in time and i don't necessarily mean that everything has to be good uh necessarily because there are always ups and downs in anything that you do but it has to be you know intense it has to have you are engaging with life in a really really sort of intense way and i generally tried to do that uh so consulting was something that i really enjoyed i got involved in all kinds of very interesting projects uh traveled quite a bit i must say uh and then uh, of course uh, entrepreneurship uh, equally very very interesting i think entrepreneurship in india is interesting across so many dimensions and i kind of started i think in very early days of this whole current wave of entrepreneurship so you know very exciting uh saw it very early uh, it was in a very interesting space uh, once again uh i was always passionate uh, personally very interested in travel uh so yeah so it's i think it's it's coming together of all of those interests and all of that Uh, feeding into uh, the principle that one must enjoy life and work is a big part of that enjoyment. Right. So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm sure our audience would would love the last part because while COVID has come home, uh, we've all been disparate, uh, disrupted. We know travel tourism is probably hospitality the yeah. worst hit across. And yeah. so and and in by virtue of the show, the idea of the show was of course to bring the leaders to 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 the younger audience and. so that yep. they could prove to be an inspiration as to where life should be going so let's just look at your own experience in travel and tourism let's share that with them and and obviously what would be your message to them in these times okay. and beyond 
so the larger message, I think, just, just specific to this time is that I think this is clearly a challenging time. Uh, but then I've also, this is 100% something that I have now total conviction on uh, after my stint in entrepreneurship is that the only way you can do great things is by facing adversity. There is no way you will do a great, great do great things when things are going hunky right. dory. Uh, and so, to that extent, one should, uh, you know, while it does not look like that today, but one should approach it with a certain degree of a sense of opportunity, saying that you know what, when things get disrupted, everything is up in the air, and therefore it is up to us to sort of redefine and make something out of it. Whether it is our own career, whether it is the the kind of companies we set up, the kind of products that we put out into the marketplace, everything is up for grabs. And so in a sense, it's a great opportunity. So I'd like to just make that as a sort of a backdrop point for all the young people out there. Do not get despondent, see this as an opportunity. Right. Uh, coming to travel and tourism and, and what's been my experience, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I look at travel and tourism, I, I have two big uh, observations uh, relating to travel and tourism in India. One is that I think all said and done, 70 years after independence, I still believe that travel and tourism is a huge missed opportunity. Uh, and I, I, and I, I think we are at like a very small percentage of our potential uh, in, in travel and tourism. And uh, it's deeply unfortunate, but that's where it is. Uh, and there are multiple reasons for that. I don't want to get into that, but I do believe that, you know, we haven't come anywhere close to potential. That's one. The other thing is that I think, um, In a very strange way, I am convinced that this disruption plays to India's inherent strengths for tourism. Uh, and I'm actually convinced in my mind that for the first time, uh, we might actually be seeing a situation where in the next decade, we can actually become a relevant global player for inbound, you know, foreigners coming into India, inbound tourism, which has never been a serious industry for India. It's been very small numbers. You know, small islands like Singapore have got, you know, many, many multiples of the uh, foreign tourists that India, this vast nation gets today. So, so I think it's a big opportunity. Uh, and the reason I say that is because the consumer, uh, the traveler, I think is going to be looking for more substance, deeper substance, uh, and a deeper engagement with places they go to, unlike an earlier place, you know, where they went for four days or five days or a week. And, you know, there's a superficial engagement with the, with the place that you go to, which you call experience, and then you go back. I think today, the way the world is changing, the people who end up traveling will actually now look for a, a deeper experience. It's the instinct that I have. Uh, and I think India is probably better than most countries on earth, positioned to deliver on that premise, on that, on that expectation. Uh, so we could potentially be looking at some, you know, really, really interesting times ahead. But the one caveat is that, therefore, we will have to relook at all our products and the way we are structured and our industry probably in total. Couldn't agree with you more because in my own forums, and I've been a practitioner of business transformation in the travel industry for a decade now, almost, uh, been doing it with, with uh, some of the big four consulting firms also as a subject matter expert. Uh, and I think COVID has been the chief transformation officer. It is making us transform. If what right. we couldn't achieve ourselves, literally. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I also draw an analogy here on, on, on to the youngsters that testing times, uh, you know, it's, it's like the cricket Chennai test, which you said it's a bad pitch or a good pitch. I mean, what's a good pitch and what's a bad pitch? And if you can be yeah. able to deal with any situation, yeah. you're a, you're a world-class batsman. And I think in right. many ways, uh, it should bring the best out of men, uh, or, or metaphorically speaking, of people. Uh, right. Yeah, but you know, you also travel. You mentioned, of course, uh, a fair amount of your life being spent traveling. Um, yeah. in, interpret traveler that you are. So, why do you travel? And and is there something you want to look back as highlights while you've done that? Again, why do I then, maybe yeah. Again, maybe as an inspiration to the travel folks, because if they can put themselves in your shoes as a traveler, I, right. I think that would give them the strength to be able to deal with their customers and their travelers. Right. Uh, you know, uh, that's a good, very good question, actually, because actually, uh, you know, one doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about that, but I think it's an interesting question. Uh, 
I think when I look back at why do I travel, I think uh, because of because I get a tremendous joy out of learning new stuff. Uh, you know, if there's any one thing that I find, uh, you know, gives me a lot of joy is learning new stuff. And nothing teaches you stuff like yeah. going to new places. I mean, there is no way you can learn you know, from books or from uh, classes or anything as much as you can from when you when you travel. And one of the features, yeah. therefore, in the way I travel uh, yeah. is that I I go with. Uh, you know, very little sort of, very, very kind of, I, I leave it a little vague and don't have a very set of specific objectives that I go with. I don't go to a place and say, you know, these are the 14 things I got to see. These are the three things I have to eat. Here are the, one is aware of some of those things that, you know, all places have these, you know, uh, sort of unique things, but you're generally going with the thing saying, you know, let me explore. Uh, and then, then what happens with that is that you find things in places that, uh, are not necessarily what is touted as the uh, as the most important and so on and so forth. And, you know, so it just comes to you. So, you know, so very often I think to myself saying that my mode of travel is not so much me going to the place as me making it easy for the place to come to me. Uh, I just go and, you know, be close to it and so it comes to me is a kind of sort of a mental model of, of how I think about travel. And, you know, it's given me something very interesting uh, from a business perspective. And, and that is, Ajish, that um, I have realized, therefore, that uh, if you go with that attitude, you end up with a lot of experiences that are outside the usual list. And the implication of that is that it also teaches you that experiences in the travel industry are a lot more than we typically tend to think of. What can be crafted as experience products can be a lot more than we normally think because we typically think within a certain box. Uh, and so I think uh, I think that would be my big uh, thing for for youngsters, saying that when you travel anywhere, uh, even within your own city, uh, go with very little, you know, uh, you know, prejudgment. Uh, be open, uh, you know, hang around, uh, listen, uh, you know, talk to strangers, uh, just open conversations, uh, just dawdle around, and you will see things that uh, that you know start to germinate in your head and say, you know, I didn't know that such an interesting thing is happening. Uh, and so I think I think that's uh, uh, at least for me has been a great way of uh, connecting my my method of traveling and the experience of traveling into the work of uh, you know of travel. Right. So the, you know I want to throw in many things and and gathering from your background and what I've heard. But when I read about this ancient India heritage you were trying to do, many thoughts went to my mind, and they are going to my mind even as I speak to you now. Right. So there was this young girl, uh, I, she was on a panel with me on Feki, uh, and she was right. part of the royal family, I think, for Balasore and Orissa. Right. And she studied overseas, she came back, young girl, and she says, you know, I live in a 200-year-old property, which she, right. with they have, of course, converted into 10, 12 rooms. And says right. each of the room tell a different story of the heritage right. of the property. Right. Uh, the cuisine, the people, the, the, the staff who have worked for, for us have probably worked over 200 years. There are many generations right. of people. Right. And the thought which went to my mind, and when everybody is talking about domestic tourism for a minute, and nobody yeah. paid attention to, even the government of India didn't pay attention to domestic tourism as they are yeah. working right. for now. Uh, having said that, I said, look, up till now, all the heritage property, be it forts, be it palaces, be it havelis, are, are, are really drawing the foreign tourists into India and we sort of tom tom and position a heritage. I said, what about Indians? I said, yeah. if, I, if somebody was to build a story around this girl's property and said to me and told me the story, perhaps it will interest the domestic audience more to go and stay in that havelis and palace, etc., rather than sure. just wondering for myself that, you know, yeah. it's, it's a heritage property. We all know right. even a property like Nimrana. I mean, we've seen photographs of what it looked like even when uh, Francis discovered it and 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 yeah. put together what it is. So that's right. one part I'm I'm making as as the ancient heritage. The second part I'm making, which can be weaved into your conversation, mm -hmm. is that I've done a I've been exposed quite a lot to the cruising industry because I I did a JV for PNO and Princess Cruises in India in the 90s and I had port of call and for the global cruise lines. And we all know right. cruises tend to attract elderly citizens uh, from, from their respective country. And they're built around sure. port of calls which are of ancient civilizations. I mean, we know Middle uh, sure. the, the Eastern Bloc really came up because of the cruising of the heritage around it. Right. We know Greece and so on. 
So there's always been a thought that India with the woven of history around it, ancient civilization, and the port of call yeah. being where are with the shoreline. Uh, there yeah. is a great cause to build a story around global cruise line. Of course, uh, the cargo turbines need to change into passenger terminals, yeah. you know, all that kind of thing. Sure. So also do tell us, of course, the, the work you're doing yourself in this line. Uh, so my work in this is actually a little different. Um, uh, in the sense of what I'm researching now, um, really arose out of my own ignorance, really. Uh, and I said, you know, what I don't know about Indian civilization is especially about what I call ancient Indian, which is really saying, you know, the last thousand years, thousand AD to today, there is still some uh, stuff that we learn in schools and so on and so forth. But my reading, my sense was that at least for me, what existed before thousand AD. Uh, is a vague set of vignettes that just, you know, somewhere in the back of your head, it just goes through once in a while. But there is no coherence, there is no uh, clarity on what is the sort of span of the Indian civilization before, both, both in terms of time, before 1080 to whenever it started, as well as the range of things that it covered, right? So this was the, uh, this was my uh, interest, uh, or rather my ignorance. And I said, you know, I must try and this thing. So I've actually spent the last year uh, just getting into this uh, between, uh, you know, everything actually, food, and architecture and art and music and uh, metallurgy. And I'm just giving you a sense of the kind of subjects that one could get into in this. Uh, and that's what I did. So uh, it's been an incredible journey. It's been a tremendous journey of uh, obviously learning for me. Uh, but it also tells me, Ashish, and I to connect back to the theme of uh, tourism, is that, you know, uh, it is in ancient India that if you ask me some very powerful uh, propositions exist for us to build our tourism around. Uh, of course, the, to the more recent stuff, I mean, 200 years in the Indian scheme of things is interesting, but it is, you know, it's a nanosecond in the it's scheme. A, it's a T20 right? game. In, in, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, it's a T20 game in the, in the, in the scheme of uh, 5,000 year, uh, at least uh, kind of uh, canvas. So, uh, so I think there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, I give you one example of this. Uh, completely, you know, I was in uh, Madurai uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, and Madurai has this famous temple, right? Madurai Binakshi Temple. And if you go to the temple, uh, one of the things that absolutely strikes you in the temple is the sheer mastery of sculpture, uh, and you know, sculpture from the very ornate sculptures to the very interesting. Pillars. It's got you know thousands and thousands of pillars, stone pillars on which that entire temple complex is supported. You know, thin pillars that are tall, like you know, fifteen feet tall, right. made out of granite, slim, thin. You know, beats any you know the simple Japanese aesthetic. Sitting thousand years old uh, in India. Now I was thinking to myself, now that's a that's a skill that's probably not there anywhere else in the world. Right. And so if we were to do, for example, a course on, you know, that kind of sculpture for kids, young people across the world, uh, using the original, you know, the some of the properties, the families actually still exist in that region. Uh, and you could actually do some tremendous stuff out of that. Now, take, that's a small example, but one example of what we could potentially do when you combine tourism, heritage and education into one very interesting proposition that we take to the world. So there are, I mean, I, I think the ancient Indian heritage space, I mean, similarly on food, I mean, I, I did a lot of research on food, fascinating stuff, uh, you know, game meat uh, and how it's used in food. And you'd be surprised at what is there in our, 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 our old document. Uh, did, did, I don't know, most people don't know, the world's first cookbook, humankind's first cookbook was uh, created in India. In, in, in antiquity, you know, antiquity, nobody even knows, uh, you know, I, I, how old it is. It's a very interesting thing. So, you know, just, just from there, you can draw so much. And so I think the ancient Indian civilization has a very vast canvas across multiple dimensions. Many of them, if, if we get into it and look at it, could be of great interest to people across the world. And we can craft very interesting products around that if we, uh, if we want to. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a very fertile area for uh, tourism. Just as I mentioned about this young girl and a haveli, uh, I think it would attract uh, the under 30s also uh, of the Indian audience on the domestic and not necessarily the people in history because there's so much. Uh, in there. 
And I mentioned to you about the cruise. I mean, yeah. we all take the Nile cruise because we are actually yeah. interested in the history of Egypt and not the river yeah. as such. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, on the, on the cruise, if you were to do a cruise from Varanasi to Prayagraj, uh, if that one cruise can teach you, I mean, if crafted well, mm. can tell all our youngsters, right? Some of the most fascinating, uh, you know, insights into the growth of the uh, civilization, because a lot of it happened in the indo gangetic plain, and which better place than to, uh, uh, you know, do a cruise at that very interesting stretch of the Ganga. So, yeah, so many interesting things, of course. And of course, let's not forget the huge NRI and PIO audience, which is now getting into a third generation. Correct. Uh, and for them Indeed. to come back. So, Ari, uh, you know, till I get to my other question of what next, I mean, I would say at this stage, um, somewhere I would like to see you play some interest in weaving these histories and, and stories in, into the travel fraternity further because you created a great product as far as Holiday IQ was concerned. And I think, like you said, we've not even touched the tip of iceberg as far as tourism is concerned, both inbound and domestic, perhaps. Um, yeah. So, Hari, I do hope. But what next for you? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, I haven't, uh, you know, I, I'm so in, deep into this, honestly, at this point, that I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about what next. But I do believe, uh, the more I spend time on this, that I do believe that... Uh, uh, you know, the, the heritage or the civilizational sort of material is strong. Uh, I think, uh, like all of us instinctively know, but I think uh, I'm starting to sense that, you know, some of it can actually become something of value. Uh, how to craft it, uh, whether it goes into tourism or it goes into some other area and then brings tourism as an adjunct, adjunct etc., is something I'm not yet clear about. Uh, but I think it's a space that, uh, you know, demands a little bit of you know, getting into in detail and thinking about it carefully. Uh, so that's what I'm giving myself a little bit of time. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm, you know, but I would loosely say that I would say that loosely culture would be a space, uh, and you know that that I think is uh, is what is catching my attention. Yeah, when you mentioned food, I'm due to talk to Chef Ranveer Brar um, mm -hmm. to have him come over on one of the episodes, and I'm going to love talking to him about uh, the food sure. you mentioned, Indian. Uh, right. Right. But lastly, um, you know, you've been successfully raised capital as far as holiday IQ is concerned. You, you've right. been an arch type exit, which, which youngsters or startups in many ways dream of, right? Yeah. But mm. that's, I have something against the startups as far as travel tourism are concerned. When I say that, yeah. because it yeah. all seems to be built around uh, creating a valuation exiting. Right. Yeah. And yeah. just two days ago, when I heard the, the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister Modi talk to the NASCOM and it right. said, you know, you must reach beyond and think of building a company, but think of building right. a foundation for future, which will last generations and right. not just think of exiting out. And, you know, that. Right. Kind of thing. so mm. that resonated with me. Beautiful. Yeah. So coming yeah. back to the point I'm trying to make that I've always believed, whereas travel tourism is concerned. And with the lack of innovation with the existing pairs and technology changing the way it's changing, the place for startup is really to innovate within the same universe of travel, create uh, and fit into the gaps of existing companies and, and integrate with them in some manner. I don't necessarily mean make your valuation and let them buy you out, et cetera, get another make my trip to buy you out. No, it could be a medium company is providing services and so on. So do you think there is a scope for and especially now with the penetration of internet reaching even tier two, three, four cities. So you could have a sub-agent as we call sub-agent in Rajasthan or in Kashmir who's been providing shikaras, right? All integrate into one startup foundation which works with existing players. How do you see this rolling out? Or would you still see that same, you know, raise capital exit? I know capital is important to run a business, but, you know, somewhere you can generate that yourself. No, I, I think, you know, Ashish, I think there are, these are all legitimate models. And I think I, I don't particularly in my mind see them as one versus the other or either or. And I'll, I'll tell you where I come from on that, right? So, I, you know, it depends on the nature of the business that you're getting into. And I think that, you know, that is important. So, for example, in Holiday IQ's case, we were trying to build a platform. Now, if you build a 
a platform play by definition is tends to be a very high capital intensive uh, business for the simple reason that platforms take a certain amount of time to get to a certain amount of traction and then that has to convert into revenue etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, platforms by nature of the business that you are trying to do or the nature of the product that you are trying to build tend to be capital intensive uh, i was i built a content led platform which is even more uh, that because it takes even longer to monetize and so on and so forth so so there is and is that important yes i think critical platforms which which add to the you know the the, the spaces that indian tourism needs is very important so the reason holiday iq when i went into holiday iq was that i actually believe that good quality of information is critical for the indian traveler not for the foreign traveler for the indian traveler for domestic tourism to take off in a big way and so i saw it as an integral part of the building blocks of domestic tourism in india and therefore uh, you know you had to build a platform at scale you know and therefore there was a logic of capital and scale and you know all of that kind of stuff but when you do capital and when you get to scale etc then at various points in time there is a question as to uh, what is the right way for that business to take its future forward with the same set of people who started the team or is it better to have a much larger organization then support it take it forward etc that tends to be the kind of case and that was the uh, context of is i think the context of many of these things so i personally value uh, i have a very high respect for entrepreneurs who create that where they create something of value something of substance and then a large company believes it's a great value and then comes in and acquires it and then tends to run it and at that point it becomes solid so that's one are there businesses that don't need to do that entirely you know there could be businesses that are uh, you know uh, don't require that much capital can have a bit uh, strong working capital if you you can raise working capital do it uh, i've seen many players do that in indian tourism and travel in many other sectors so it is certainly possible as well but the one caveat to the point you're making is that i will say that i don't believe i am actually very strongly of opinion that the tourism of the next 5 years will be quite different in how it plays out from the tourism of the last 20 years uh, and i i am i can see the big and that's not because of covid and covid in my mind is only a accelerating factor the real factor is technology and how technology is changing the consumers on behaviors and i think as tourism fundamentally changes i think anybody getting into into entrepreneurship today should be very cautious about how they expect travel and tourism itself to be morphed uh, so and i think so that's a that's a big caveat that we have for entrepreneurs getting into that space today and to that extent i think existing structures uh, are not entirely set right uh, that's where the, uh, the lastly the thought i have always been having is both between the government and the private companies which exist today in travel tourism hospitality yeah. aviation is to be able to create some kind of a fund which is based on on providing capital to these ingenious startups within themselves so then they later on can work with the existing players and don't have to go to outsiders if i may say uh, uh, whose whose intent is only uh, valuation and exit to the next party you know they have a much more deep rooted interest in building the foundation how would you react to that is there a possibility of raising this fund and creating it totally within the way which 100% the only thing we have to be very clear about the purpose of the fund my personal opinion is that the purpose of the fund should be that in some of these kind of tourism ventures the time it takes to get to a stage where somebody can then start to break even is long and so what you need this fund to do is to give patient capital for that time Uh, see, after that, commercial capital will come in, and we must, you know, completely encourage commercial capital to come in, global capital to come in, everything. But what often happens is that capital is not patient. So, and we don't get the benefit of that patience. Whereas in many other countries in the world, patient capital exists along with the commercial capital. We don't have that, and that's the opportunity that I think is there in having that. So wonderful, uh, Hari, and I do hope we will have the pleasure of leaning on your experience from time to time. and you won't sort of uh, move away totally from the travel industry we like to see your skin in the game if, sure. as, uh, thank, thank you very much thank you for coming in today and having this coffee thank uh, you karthik you have something to say no no it was uh, as expected lovely to to hear from you hari and i'm sure i'll talk to you separately on your learnings from ancient civilization i think that's going to be really interesting i'll pick your brain sometime for sure but thanks so much for sparing time 
uh, thank you ashish as always and thanks everybody for joining in and we'll see you next week thanks again hari thank you thank you hari bye bye